Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and you're very welcome to this um, special Fulbright webinar, Fulbright Ireland webinar. Um, hopefully everybody knows that our award program for 23-24 is now open and uh, you are attending this talk today and watching it on, on recording to find out more information specifically about, um, I guess, the, the program, but specifically uh, the, the Fulbright Chagas uh, Awards and our relationship with Fulbright Chagas. So I'm going to be joined with a, by a number of um, colleagues and uh, and alum and people from Chagas today to to talk about this at a at a later stage. I'm going to lead the conversation initially, just talking about the Fulbright program, the whys, the the application process, and uh, your opportunities and the options and how you maybe go about it at this point. Okay. So moving on then to my first slide then, um, just talk about the program. Why Fulbright and where did it come from? Well, it started in the, in the 40s after the Second World War. The basis for uh, the drive by Senator J. William Fulbright in the US was that he saw that, um, you know, how badly people treated each other when they didn't see each other as people, but as others. So he viewed that uh, there was an opportunity, particularly through education, to change that narrative so that people saw each other as the same as themselves and experience that. So his view was that if you could go to another country and be involved in the education process and research project process at some stage, that you then would develop a relationship with people and they would develop it with you. So that was done in the, in the 40s. Expectation was, I think, initially that there would be eight countries would join. But in reality, we're now up to uh, roughly 180 countries that the programme is active in. There are 49 commissions around the world. Ireland has one of those commissions. We joined the programme in 1957. We set up a specific commission then uh, through a statutory instrument in law in 1991. And uh, we're here in 2022 and we're, we're working with a very vibrant programme. So why Fulbright? Um, what is it for? Well, we very much are looking for passionate and accomplished people um, to apply as students. Students typically means postgraduate. Um, scholars, scholars typically mean after you've completed a PhD. Um, and professionals where you have five plus years professional, relevant professional experience. We have artists, um, and not to pick out artists specifically, but we have a bit of teachers as well, and they fall into different categories and groups. So across disciplines, and when we say all disciplines, we really mean all disciplines. As I said, we can have from judges to um, to uh, uh, to biotechnologists to economists uh, and so on. But they can carry out research, or they can study, or they can uh, teach or lecture in the United States. And obviously, the program works in the other direction as well. So we do have U.S. Uh, uh, scholars, professionals, and students who come to Ireland. We're not going to specifically talk about those today. We're talking about people from Ireland um, going over to the United States. It is very much an experience of a lifetime. It can last a lifetime. Um, unlike many other programs, this is very much around people. So the engagement when you're in the United States and when you come back to Ireland and you continue that engagement, that should last your lifetime. And your engagement with the Fulbright program um, can, can be a lifetime engagement, and many of our alumni would testify to that. Um, obviously, there's, there's, a, there's an amount of prestige and recognition of your success in getting this award and, uh, and the engagement with other Fulbrighters um, across the world. So it's a global, it is a global program. But interestingly, it's very much um, a family as well. So becoming a part of a Fulbright program isn't just the, the start and end of the program. Your engagement with everybody from the people at the commission, from our sponsors, from the alumni, from the alumni associations, from the programs in the United States. It's very much a family. Everybody is inter, is happy to interact and uh, tends to, you tend to push open doors when dealing with other full fighters. So it's very much a call to join your global peers. What do we provide in terms of the awards? Well, it's a, typically a monetary grant. There is visa administration um, and there's accident and emergency insurance. Um, not to be understated, but cultural and professional programming, both here in Ireland and in the United States, is also provided as part of the program. So it's not just a tick box and off you go. We do very much engage with you before, during and then after you come. 
There are ongoing supports uh, and links to a global network of Fulbright alum, both here in Ireland and then in, in a broader sense. So starting, starting your um, application and specifically talking about today, we're going to talk about the Fulbright Irish Awards uh, for uh, our, including our relationship with Chagas. So there are three opportunities really here. One is um, the main ones are for Chagas Fulbright Student Award and we'll come and talk about that in a minute. There's also a new Fulbright Chagas Scholar and Professional Award. So we're very much aiming to not just build upon, I guess, our success with the Student Award, which, uh, which has gone on for many years, but specifically recognize that there is a space and a need for, um, for scholars and professionals to apply to Fulbright, and particularly from the areas of ag agri-food and forestry and environment. So we're very much pushing that. Uh, I should note that you, if if you find an area um, that you are not sure that it it sits within the the Fulbright Chagas programs, you can also apply under the all disciplines for any any of the areas that you might identify. But I would say to exhaust um, that opportunity both in discussion with us and perhaps with Chagas before you decide that you that you don't have a space there. But um, so looking at the student award. Um, you know, as I said, it's for a postgraduate. Uh, it's uh, for four to 12 months. All student awards are four to 12 months. It's for an Irish or an EU citizen. So an EU citizen is is uh, allowed, is eligible to apply if they have uh, been in Ireland for five years or more. So that's a, and that's an unusual um, uh, eligibility that the Irish Commission provides. Uh, most other European commissions don't provide this. Um, but um, you must be a current or prospective postgraduate student with a minimum of a 2-1. Uh, you must have a clear course of study and research and... Oh, geez. Um, one of the things, I guess, we will talk about a little bit more, but we will say that we are very much looking for people who are... who. Our, our leaders are going to become leaders in their area, are passionate about their area, who, who strive to move forward and use a platform like Fulbright to actually develop their career and their passions and their interest. Um, you cannot be a dual uh, US Irish citizen uh, or a green card holder uh, or currently living in the United States. And we do say that you should not have extensive experience of studying or living in the United States. If you have any queries about that, uh, please ask the commission. But typically that's, you know, it's, I. I think we have some flexibility around that, particularly if you make a decision to go to a completely different part of the United States. Um, and as many people on the call will know, the United States uh, can be very different from east to west to, to Midwest. Okay, so the new award we're talking about today as well is the Scholar and Professional Award. So as we mentioned already, professionals with five years uh, or more relevant experience can also apply for this award. So they would apply under the, the scholar section of the, of the, of the Fulbright um, platform. Um, and really the, the, the main differences, I guess, are that it, that it can be from three to 12 months um, on five years professional relevant experience. Uh, so you must have a PhD or have those five years relevant exp um, experience. Uh, the, the same eligibilities for an Irish citizen or a US citizen, EU, we spoke about already, already um, apply. And again, uh, the dual US Irish citizen green card holder eligibilities are, are also important. I guess it's, uh, we've had many awards uh, and we've had many uh, people coming from the sector of agri-food um, and, and biosciences and uh, agriculture and all those areas over the years. Uh, we haven't got them all listed here. We've just uh, two or three. So Kate Birmingham, who actually will be joining us later to talk about her experience on the programme. Kate is currently at King's College in London. She'd come from UCD and uh, she went to the, the US Department of Agriculture um, and I, I think it was 2018, 19, Kate can verify that. Um, we also have uh, just of note, um, Connor Hammersley, who's currently in the States um, and Connor won um, a, a, a Fulbright a, a Chagas Student Award and he's um, studying aspects of his, of his PhD in the United States. Um, and another person of note, a uh, more recent note then was Shane O'Donnell as well, who's also received the Fulbright Chagas Student Award um, and some people would know um, Shane as uh, 
as a famous Clara Harlan. Many more alumni can be found on Fulbright.ie, and I would actually suggest that anybody who's looking to apply to this award consider um, discussing it with those alumni. You can speak to any Fulbright alumni, and they'll help you, uh, you know, in the process in a general sense. But if you have specific questions about the Fulbright Talgus Student Award in particular, I would suggest that you speak to uh, people like Shane and Connor. In a general sense, then, the Irish awards uh, do break down into a number of categories. We've got student awards, um, not just obviously the Chagas Award, but we have, a, we have a series of other student awards, um, and they are for postgraduate research. Um, they can in, be involved in research, or you can be looking to do a, a postgraduate de degree, so you can sign up for a postgraduate degree. Uh, I should note, we, in terms of a postgraduate degrees, Fulbright only supports the first year. And very often there are a lot of stepping stones uh, for uh, for applicants to then um, follow uh, to seek follow on funding while they're in the in the United States. We would see that quite a lot. The Irish Scholar Awards then again the same uh, prerequisite for um, a PhD or five years plus uh, professional experience. They uh, they provide uh, people opportunities to go and research or lecture uh, or sometimes a combination of researcher research and lecturing in the United States. We have some specific type of awards that are unique to the Irish Fulbright Commission. And these are called the Irish Tenic Impact Awards. These awards um, are very much focused on the impact of ICT. That doesn't mean you have to come from an ICT sector. It means that, uh, that you might be looking at the impact of an ICT program on the work you do, or if you do come from an ICT um, background, that you're looking to look to bring the technology that you have developed and perhaps um, integrate and interact with uh, with colleagues in the United States. These are scholar awards, so they're not student awards, scholar and professional awards. And they can be from two weeks to three months. Uh, Irish FLTA awards, um, Irish is a foreign language in the United States and the FLTA program allows um, Irish, Irish citizens or Irish or eligible citizens to go and teach Irish in the United States in different institutions. So we would have to, uh, we would have up to 10 FLTAs in every year who teach Irish language in the United States. Probably not relevant to the group here. And a final program, um, which probably we don't have a definitive opening date. It operates out of the Belgian Commission, but it's the, the Fulbright Schumann Awards. And those, that program is, for larger scale issues that can impact um, you know, the, the EU and the United States and actually agricultural policies and, 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 and equivalent would be of note there as well. So I'd encourage you if you are interested, particularly at a policy level, that you might consider also looking at those uh, awards. So we do have, um, I mentioned we have the All Disciplines Awards at the beginning that applies to any area. We do also have uh, specific sponsored awards. Uh, again, today we're particularly talking about the Chalkis Award, but just for a note, there are other programs that, um, that, that, that provide directed sponsorship. So we're working in very specific areas um, associated with different uh, sponsors, or sometimes in the case of NUI, it's not so much a specific discipline, but it's more different types of eligibilities. So again, if you feel that you're you're not sure that you fit in under this specific award, please do take a look at the other awards that are available. All of this is available on, on, our, on our website in detail. And again, just a list of some of those awards. Some are specific to, uh, to students and some are specific to scholars, and some can have one or the other applied there. The, the, the latter are not mentioned here as such. But again, uh, we would encourage you to, to, to please um, look carefully through the, the awards that are on offer um, and the eligibilities. And in terms of the details associated with this Chagas Award, I would also say to, to please look through, you know, the, the, the parts of it and see where you would fit in. Uh, I would suggest, and, and Jane Kavanagh, who's um, from Chagas, who will talk later, will probably recommend as well that, that you do that you do look at the, the areas of interest for Chagas um, and you're going to find that they're, they're, they're very, very broad. Uh, perhaps many of you are very, very familiar uh, already. So the application timeline, well, the awards have opened now and they're going to close on the 27th of August of October, apologies. Um, in November to December, we will be carrying out reviews. These will be tech technical-based reviews. You will have three 
um, technical specialist who will look at uh, the application you've put in and they will assess that um, at a few different levels. Uh, then in February, um, hopefully you will be called for interview. And uh, after that point, then in March, when we have um, approval from uh, the Irish Commission Board and also from the Fulbright Foreign Scholarship Board in the United States, then we will be in a position to make offers uh, to successful candidates. In terms of your planning, um, again, a point I've made already is review. Please do review information on the website and um, pay attention in as in every application, you know, the attention, you know, it's it, the attention to detail is, uh, you know, it, it saves a lot of hassle in the future. Choosing your award again, uh, we would hope that um, most of the people on this call will be giving serious attention to the Fulbright Chagas Awards. Um, find then what you want to do in the United States um, and plan what that research proposal would be. Please also research what it means to be a Fulbrighter. Bearing in mind that Fulbright has existed for almost 76 years, that suggests that there's elements of longevity in it. Those elements of longevity are very much around the people and the program itself. And um, not so much about the disciplines and the activity that gets carried out, but very much back to the people themselves and their passions. And that's all part of what it means to be a Fulbrighter. And please register then your interest on, you'll see that there's an, a, a register your interest or apply now button on Fulbright.ie. So establishing your eligibility, as we've already discussed, um, you want to look at um, Irish and uh, or EU citizenship. You want to really uh, demonstrate a strong rationale for going to the United States. I, I would also add to that to say that it really should make sense to you first. First and foremost, it should absolutely make sense to you. So also, um, you just to understand that you would have to comply with a two-year home rule. So if the expectation is that you will come back to Ireland and reside in Ireland for at least two years. Thereafter, if you uh, make a decision that you want to go back to, to the United States, you will be thereafter um, eligible for, uh, for, a, for a longer term residency in the United States. But if you haven't completed your two year home rule, then you won't be eligible. You cannot be a dual Irish and US citizen. And as we said already, you cannot be in the US at the time of application. And we discussed the recent extensive experience. Finding a host then, very often it's pushing an open door because they will understand that you're applying for a Fulbright. And in fact, many will be quite um, impressed that you're applying for a Fulbright award. So please do seek out experts in your field. Consider whether this is a, an absolutely good fit for you, not just on the research that they're doing, but where they are, uh, where they are based as well. We, we don't always suggest that you that you look for the Irish enclaves. There are there, it may make sense to go there, um, but there are many many. It's a big country and continent, so there are many opportunities to cross that. And we would seriously suggest that that you look at these opportunities. It actually fits under as well under our, our push for diversity is to get people to go to less well trodden areas and underrepresented institutions. So in that sense, you get a better sense if you want to reach out to Fulbright Irish and US alum, particularly the US alum, if you've identified a region that you'd like to go, they will be most will be very happy to help you and, and put you straight in terms of the information that you might be looking for. Thereafter, do, do, do look at selecting a host institution. And as I'd already said, it should make sense to you first. And you should be able to say, I need to go to this place because so all of those questions will be asked of you. So you need to demonstrate that. So the application requirements are going to be personal information and a CV. You're going to have to write a Fulbright statement. That's going to be very much uh, about you again and about your connection to Fulbright and where you want to go and why you want to go and why it makes sense at this time of your career. Yeah, the project statement then is something you're probably going to be more familiar with, which is writing out what you're going to do. Uh, then you will need three recommenders. You, we will need to see a passport, a copy of your passport. Um, and if you're an artist, we would typically ask for hard copies of um, your of your work and also a letter of affiliation for researchers or scholars. It's not always a requirement up front, but if you have some idea of where you want to go, that obviously it makes it a much easier uh, decision or an easier proposition to understand why you should go to, to the United States. Typically, 
it it may take some time to get that to get the letter of affiliation but at some point we will come back and we will explain that you have uh, that you absolutely have a letter of affiliation understanding your research objectives why you know is is your work groundbreaking why do you need to do this work and then very importantly why go to the united states why not germany or another country so really understanding why the, why the united states um, and understanding and developing an understanding that you can represent to everybody else you know, the work you're going to do um, and what specifically you're going to do. Explain your objectives and your expected results. And I think most people are very comfortable doing that. A little bit beyond that then is what impact will this have on obviously the area you're working on, but um, you know, and how will it advance the, the research you want to do. But I think even more importantly, the you know your career and where you want to take um, your your work and what opportunity and how you're going to use the global platform of Fulbright, the Irish and global platform of Fulbright, to advance yourself and your career and the work that that you're doing. So these are all very very important. I think most people are quite comfortable writing about the the objectives and the expected results of the, of the work they're going to do or the study they're going to do. A little bit less so than about looking at your career and the next steps. And actually, it's one of the, the real benefits of that and the personal statement are actual benefits very often viewed by people who apply for Fulbright because it's forced you to think in those terms. So there are no there are very few downsides in applying for a Fulbright. Actually, you know, probably the, the only downside is the time you have to put into it. But the, there are there are a lot of benefits that you can achieve, irrespective of whether you're successful getting a Fulbright award or not. So your Fulbright statement, very, very important. And it's important anyway, I think at anybody's career and stage is to talk about you personally. We don't necessarily want to hear about you through the prism of the work, but we want to find out about you. You can talk about your professional ambitions and your personal ambitions and what your interests are. And this is very much where Fulbright is you know, very interested possibly probably more than the most applications or that you would or agencies that you would apply to we're very interested in the people as well you know and not some understanding of the benefits of being a full brother how that will drive you and the role that you can play as that you know, please don't rehash your um your your study through you know through that lens and uh, don't rehash your cv this is something different this is very much about you so when at the review stage, then it is looking uh, probably more about 60-40 or 70-30 at academic record in your project statement. So all of that should stack up. But we're also looking then at your cultural engagement and the leadership that you may have or the leadership that you that you would expect to have or you can you can show that you will develop in, in future. If you get called to interview that much, that flips the other way around. So it's mainly about uh, about you as a person and where you want to go and your passions and your drive and how you're going to achieve that and the type of full brother that you want to be so don't be surprised if you're being asked questions about you personally and your passions there are many resources that you can look at obviously the website as well there are fulbright ambassadors if you're associated with an institution you can look up the fulbright ambassador at that institution we have many now, uh, uh, pre-COVID, post-COVID, we have many uh, videos and we have testimonials and we have webinars. You will see many Fulbright events have been recorded as well. As I had mentioned, you can get support at your institution through the institution itself and also through the alumni campus ambassadors there as well. And please consider following uh, Fulbright um, affiliate groups. Diversity inclusion, like everybody I, I i suppose but uh, we have been on this uh, on this road for diversity and inclusion for many many years and it means many things to us including diversity of disciplines including diversity of what institutions you come from or institutions that you go to and we we very much support diversity we are very inclusive and i think if you go to our website and look at um, the different aspects of that you will certainly get that view and we also look to understand people from many you know, who are coming from every, many different roads. It's not necessarily a direct academic path that you that you need to have traveled. Sometimes uh, an indirect path can also be very interesting. As I've said before, we're very much interested in the person. There are obviously going to be um, 
standards and requirements and different eligibilities. But outside of that, we would encourage people do not select, deselect yourself or self-select out of applying for Fulbright on the basis that you think you won't get it. Time and time again, we've had people who've taken that step forward and have achieved and have it's the result of it has been that they have actually gotten a Fulbright Award. And to some extent, they've been very surprised and then delighted and they've never looked back. So I think there is an opportunity here for everybody. And I would, I would, I would advise you to please look at that. So your next steps would be to reach out to the recommenders, select your host institution, research the ethos and what it means to be a Fulbrighter. Talk to Fulbrighters. Most Fulbrighters are very, very happy to, to uh, provide all of the detail that they possibly could. It's a very, it's a very caring and uh, interested group of people who, who have been previously awarded Fulbrighters. So they're very interested in you. They're very interested in, in, in paying it forward as well to have new Fulbrighters join them. Um, uh, you know, obviously look at our website and if you have access to social media, please follow us on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram um, or other avenues that you want to do. Um, you can obviously email us as well and please check our website fullbright.ie. If there are very specific questions that you cannot seem to find the answer, haven't looked at our website, then please do also contact us. Now, I don't see just yet that Kate Birmingham is coming in, but so I think what I might do is um, we have Jane Kavanagh on the call. Jane, if you're comfortable to come in now, maybe just give a reflection from the Chagas point of view. Yeah, absolutely, Dara. Um, so I would just like to uh, thank Dara and uh, say good, good afternoon to everybody and uh, you're welcome to this webinar. Um, Chagas is delighted to be sponsoring two Fulbright Awards this year. We have a long-standing relationship with Fulbright and we've actually been sponsoring a Fulbright Student Award for many years now. And we've seen the fantastic development opportunities that the students have experienced and gained from their participation in their program and also from their visits to the US. And I'm actually really looking forward to hearing about uh, Kate's experience in uh, with USGA and in, in California. And as Dara mentioned, some of the recent winners um, include Connor Hammersley, who's actually just gone to New York, I think only last week to uh, conduct some research on farmers health. Uh, Rachel White, a previous winner also, uh, she went to Florida to conduct research on dairy cow fertility. And Connor Holohan went to Wisconsin to explore uh, the use of pasture feeding on dairy farms. So uh, quite a range of topics that um, previous winners have gone to study. I would encourage anyone that's thinking of applying for the Fulbright Chagas Award to contact a previous award winner and, and just to have a chat with them to find out what was involved and also to enable uh, you to make the most of your Fulbright um, experience and award. This year, Chagas is delighted to be sponsoring a new award. Uh, this new award is aimed at scholars and professionals to explore topics, a wide range of topics relating to agriculture and food. And this new award will provide uh, scholars and professionals within the agri-food industry with a great opportunity to help them to develop their career, build new collaborations, develop new knowledge, which they can then bring back to their own area of research or work. So I would strongly encourage anyone who's thinking about it to apply um, and to take on board all the hints that Dara has put in his presentation here this morning. And I wish you um, every success with the application process. So I'd just like to thank Dara, uh, Aoife, Paula, and the team at Fulbright for, for organizing this webinar today. Thanks very much, Jane. I was going to ask you actually a question. I was I, I was interested. I mean, um, you know, the, I found my experience before and I've, I've worked with agencies like the USDA as well. And I've always been you know, very encouraged with the, the, the huge diversity of the work that's carried out, probably more than most other disciplines that uh, so Chagas is going to fall under quite a similar remit. I mean, in terms of uh, specific core areas of interest or of focus for your research at the moment, um, is there any background you could give to that? Are there any particular areas that you see are very, very hot or interesting? It doesn't preclude, obviously, people in much broader disciplines uh, applying, but are there any areas that, that you specifically see as important? Well, Dara, as, as you mentioned, uh, Chagas conducts research on a wide range of areas, and I suppose we 
I've I suppose been reluctant to to name any particular topic because it is so kind of wide ranging. So um, at Chagas, the areas that we would be mostly interested in would be we have a program that looks at animal and grassland research. And um, we also look at crops, environment and land use, uh, rural economy and uh, the social science aspect, as well as uh, food research. Um, as you know, there's probably a lot of there are a lot of challenges uh, facing the agri-food industry, uh, most notably around climate change. So that might be a, a good area, maybe that if somebody was interested in. But I would like to, I suppose, keep it very broad because um, we don't want to exclude anybody from applying. Um, it's very, you know, it's such a wide range of area. There are plenty of challenges out there, and I think if somebody is really passionate about a topic, if there's something new. Um, that they think a new, either a new technology or a new idea that they feel might be um, really, really interesting to, to investigate further, I would strongly encourage them to do that. So I wouldn't like anybody to think that their topic uh, mightn't fit. So I would um, leave it wide open. Okay, thanks Jane, good to know that. Um, that's that's not always the case uh, in some of our sponsor programs that are, that are a little bit more directed. Um, so I, 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 that particularly pleases me having come from kind of working in hybrid areas, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in that. Um, I think uh, we uh, we now have um, Kate Birmingham, who's, a, who's a, a former, well, a current alumni and a former uh, Fulbright Chagas awardee. Um, and th Kate, thanks very much for taking the time out. I appreciate you were coming from another meeting. So it's very much appreciated that you could be here just to give a reflection and encourage um, people to do what you did some years ago um, and, and apply for a Fulbright, uh, Fulbright Award, in uh, particularly the Fulbright Chagas Award. Thanks, Dara. Um, hi, everyone. Yes, my name is uh, Kate Birmingham, and I was uh, very lucky to be a Fulbright Chagas awardee in the year of 2019. Uh, I think there's actually a slide, Dara, if we could go to the next one, that I just have a couple of pictures. You have? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, as I said, yeah, um, I was a Fulbright um, awardee in 2019 and I got the opportunity to travel and work in the USDA in the Human Nutrition Research Center, in, which is based in Davis, California. So um, it was obviously an amazing opportunity. I was um, doing my PhD in, in UCD and I decided to visit John Newman's research lab, which is based in the USD, to further my PhD research. Um, and I was lucky to be able to work with him and he's a world leading expert in kind of lipid profiling techniques. So it was an amazing addition to my research to be able to go and um, kind of integrate and adapt into his lab, learn techniques and bring over my skill set and work together to form these kind of lifelong collaborations with him. Um, so on top of the research, it was also such an amazing opportunity to live um, in Davis, California, and I got to travel around California, which is obviously an amazing place. So um, as part of that, I went to Yosemite multiple times. I was drinking wine in Napa. I went uh, to casinos in Reno, uh, basketball games and um, baseball games, football games in Sacramento. And I obviously went to San Francisco multiple times because Davis is located just beside Sacramento and really close to San Francisco. So it's an amazing area to be able to, to be based in. Um, so as part of my application, um, I would highly, highly uh, encourage and recommend everyone to attend the Fulbright events that are held um, and they kind of walk you through the application process, they give you tips and tricks as to what they're looking for and you get to meet some kind of alumni and, and hear about their experiences to get you excited about what actually this, this could mean for you. Um, I actually applied uh, before the year I was successful, so I applied first and um, I was unsuccessful in my first application, but actually it was really um, um, a, a brilliant learning curve for me. I got invaluable feedback from the um, kind of correction panel that um, corrected my application and I was able to feedback their feed or sorry reintegrate their feedback back into my application it also gave me time to kind of sit back and reassess why I really wanted to do this and actually what an amazing opportunity would be for me and for for um, the research lab that I was proposing to go to so um what was important during the application is to really identify um, um a research area that you'd like to go to um, and see how, you know, think about how you have strengths that you can bring over to America and, and what 
you can learn over there and how you can marry these together to make a proposal even better. So that's what we did. I brought my strengths from kind of my PhD research, which was in kind of twin research and metabolomics. And the Newman lab had kind of expertise in that lipid profiling. And we worked together to kind of make some amazing um, and, and publish some amazing findings, kind of furthering that research in, 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 in that area. And it was an invaluable opportunity. And now I've kind of worked with these people and we've lifelong collaborations, continuing to work on this exciting research. Um, in terms of identifying a host, I would, um, I'd like to say, you know, uh, it's important, obviously, every person's different, what you're working on, what you're interested in, but try and identify an, an area or an individual who, who you would dream to work with. And I was lucky for my application that um, some people in my department um, had some connections with John Newman. I was aware of him as that leading expert in, in, in the, the field of lipidomics and we were able to kind of send, send a, a, a kind of pitch email. And he obviously was very enthusiastic to, to work together to try and, and, and get this kind of Fulbright funding. And uh, we set up a call from there and uh, kind of chatted through what we could do again, what I could offer and what he, he had to offer and how we could work together. Um, so that's kind of how we developed that relationship. And that led to him kind of writing his letter of support for the Fulbright application, which was very important. Um, and then I suppose since my Fulbright, um, it's really been invaluable in my career. Um, it's an amazing opportunity to kind of build these collaborations in America, to develop your skill set as an individual and to adapt and integrate into a new environment. Um, and the Fulbright community is so, so, so friendly. I am always like nearly weekly all the time meeting new people and um, Fulbright people are based all over the world and they're always so welcoming and happy to talk and communicate about things um, and I as an individual after my Fulbright I hope that I do the same and I'm kind of encouraging people constantly so I, I can't say with more kind of excitement that go for it and uh, the application I would say as far as applications go is it's a really nice application to do if anyone has any experience in kind of science grad research applications it's much nicer it's it's fun as i said the events and talks and the people that you get to talk to in the process of of doing that application is so rewarding uh, and you learn so much about it and about yourself in the process so um i highly recommend it and uh, encourage everyone to apply Kate, I was going to thank you there for, first of all, saying that it's a fun application. That's great to hear. Thank you. Secondly, it's and, and that's interesting. It's a, it's a nice segue because I guess a lot of what you spoke about there was how to set up your application and the award. And the interesting thing is that the, the slide you put up is all about the fun and experience that you actually had. And, you know, and obviously, particularly at a student level, you're, you're quite focused on the work you want to do. But actually, the value, the probably the longer term value is the fun and the experience and the people that you meet and how you develop on that. And I think those slides, actually, your pictures there really show that. And we have them many, many times over similar types of pictures that come through all about the experience. Do you have any little segues or commentaries about your experience or any funny little anecdotes that you could share as being a Fulbrighter and viewed as a Fulbrighter in the USDA? Yeah, I suppose uh, what's, what's amazing about Fulbright is if, if, if anyone ever hears you're a Fulbright, the actual excitement and, um, you know, the amount of questions you get asked the minute they, they find out, um, it, it's really wonderful and uh, it makes you so, so proud to be able to represent uh, the Fulbright community and, and Ireland, uh, especially um, uh, as an individual. Um, in terms of experiences, it, like as I said, I traveled and I saw as much as I possibly could. I was there for four months and I, as I said, went to Yosemite multiple times, Napa, Sacramento, San Francisco. Um, if there was any ever or ever any opportunity to go or do anything with colleagues, with friends, um, I would jump on it and I would say that uh, people, you know, because it's Fulbright people, welcome like open their arms to you and and are are incredibly kind i had endless opportunities to travel meet people i spent an amazing thanksgiving with a, a, an incredible family and they cooked a big dinner 
and we sat around and said what we were grateful for and it was just a brilliant experience so yeah amazing excellent well thank you yeah i mean it, it it it's great that that you got to say yes to everything and uh, and, and and adopt that side and that's a big big part of what we're doing and um, you know as a Fulbright program i said at the beginning of this of, of this webinar that you know it's 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 around almost 76 years and there are, there's a key reason that i think it's because it can be a lifelong and it's about people people to people experience and that's what actually keeps the the, the longevity of that well thank you very much for for joining us um if you it, and hang on a couple of minutes and uh, we're just going to open it out to um a question and answers uh, i i don't know if my colleague paula melvin uh, is going to is going to go live as well to join me um there's been a couple of questions i see related to i guess eligibility based on nationality um unfortunately it's reasonably strict in the sense that um you're either an eu citizen or you're an Irish citizen and you've been in EU in Ireland for more than uh, five years. Um, and that that is very much um, based around uh, there are potential issues associated with the, the home rule as well, where you provide your home rule. So Ireland's quite an unusual commission in the sense that we do um, uh, uh, allow for non-Irish citizens to apply to it. Um, some, so it, unfortunately, if, if you don't fall into that eligibility, I would recommend that you look at, at your own, the commission in the, in the country of, of, of your nationality um, and understand what opportunities they would have. Just to say those opportunities are going to be very, very similar to the opportunities we would have. So I don't think there's a major loss there. Um, and building upon what Dara said, naturally, then if you're a UK citizen based in Ireland, you are not eligible as you're no longer a member of the European Union. And someone else is asking how they can find us on YouTube. So it's just simply put in Fulbright Ireland and a wide variety of videos and webinars and other resources are available there on Fulbright Ireland's YouTube channel. OK, there's a question. I work in the University in Northern Ireland. Am I eligible to apply? I guess that's come down to the uh, you would have to advise on your uh, your your citizenship uh, associated with that. But being from a Northern Ireland university isn't isn't any barrier to application. Um, if I am successful in March, when will I have to go? Um, usually the earliest people go is August. So if you're successful in the interviews, they'll be conducted in January, February. You'll be informed in early March that you're successful or unsuccessful and then generally august is the earliest time you can go simply because we have to process your visa you need to do a medical there's a number of events in in dublin castle and perhaps the us embassy and an orientation and several things that will be involved there and so there is a particular lead in time for that visa and um, so early august kind of um, next year would be the usually the earliest you could go. If you have a master's program that has to start in July and you have to go in July, we will strive to make that happen for you. Um, Dara mentioned the maximum um, duration of awards and the minimum. So for Fulbright scholar or professional awards, uh, the minimum is four months and the maximum is 12 months. And then for, stu uh, sorry, for students, it's four months to 12 months. And then for scholars and professionals, it's three to 12 months. Thanks, Paula. There was a, a question here as well about asking, will the slides be shared? And um, th actually, this webinar has been recorded and this will be available. So if we went too fast or you need to 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 focus on particular slides, they will be available and shortly on, on our YouTube channel. OK, I think the rest of the questions are effectively similar questions. So I think we probably answered those. Um, I'm just going to take the opportunity now uh, to thank uh, everybody and uh, my colleagues at Fulbright. Uh, thank uh, Jane Kavanagh from Chagas uh, for, for turning up to, to, to support what is a great, has been a great relationship, a great reward, uh, award, and we have another great award. And I, I really hope that people uh, take the opportunity to, to look into all of the awards that we're uh, providing, and, and in particular for this group, for the Chagas Awards. And uh, also thanks very much to uh, Kate Birmingham for uh, taking time out um, from her uh, her busy schedule at um, uh, in in London, and uh, I'll leave the call at this point to say thank you, everybody, and best of luck. We hope to see you on the flip side of your of your applications, and take care.